From California State University, San Bernardino, it's Local Matters. Essential oils in San Bernardino history. Hello, I'm Jalen Blythe, and welcome to Local Matters, featuring stories from across the Inland Empire. And I'm Mirari Morales. Essential oils are growing in popularity, as holistic medicine has brought back the magic of home remedies. Reporter Amanda Romero talks with the daily consumer of the oils to discover their benefits and uses. Essential oils have many uses. Depending on the oil you use, it can be used in cooking, beauty products, or even just in your everyday health. Essential oils are aromatic compounds. You find them in plants, in the seeds, the leaves, the flowers, anything that has to do with the plant, that's where you find them. I like to use the essential oils because they're natural. I kind of feel like I have control over my body, uh, control that I can use this stuff and be in charge of my own health care. What I'll do is I'll grab a little bit of the peppermint, kind of put it underneath my nose, kind of wakes me up, gives me a burst of energy for the drive home. I've used lavender for sleep to calm myself, to relax. Um, I've also used the lemon. I use it in my water every day. Drink it in my water to cleanse my, my system. These homemade remedies may not cure illnesses like the common cold. However, they have shown significant prevention against toxins that may cause symptoms like fatigue or pain. And we'll just let them sit and then after Not to say that I don't go to a doctor, but I like to prevent going to a doctor if I can and use these to keep my body healthy. Looks like it's time to make some room in your medicine cabinet. With their many uses, there's an essential oil for everyone. For Local Matters, I'm Amanda Romero. The Santa Fe Depot played a big role in the development of the metropolitan city of San Bernardino. Reporter Irma Martinez takes a trip back in time with the help of the San Bernardino Historical and Pioneer Society to learn more about our city's history. The Santa Fe Railways opened endless possibilities in shaping San Bernardino. The Cajon Pass attributed to the majority of the, the growth in San Bernardino since it was the, the first major area that they stopped in coming through the Mojave Desert. Uh, over here, it was thought that San Bernardino would probably be the largest city in Southern California because of the railroad. The reason they didn't include Los Angeles in this is because the ports weren't active then. Employment here at its heyday was about 3,000 people, plus all the peripheral businesses that supplied uh, the needs of Santa Fe at this point. Uh, 26 passenger trains a day came through here, 13 eastbound, 13 westbound. So there was a lot of activity in San Bernardino. They named a lot of their trains through the Indian tribes and through New Mexico and Arizona. So we had the chief, the super chief, the Navajo, the scout. A lot of their decals or paintings on the side of the trains were an Indian chief. Uh, they incorporated the Southwest theme to try to draw people to the West here. This was their first experience of Southern California's coming through the, the Mojave Desert. And so you had a real fertile valley with high mountains and uh, something a lot of people liked. So then you have the migration of people out this way. Check out the San Bernardino History and Railroad Museum, open Wednesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. For Local Matters, I'm Irma Martinez. To keep updated on what Local Matters is doing, follow our social media. To watch some of our other stories, head on over to our YouTube channel at Local Matters, CSUSB. I'm Yerani Morales. And I'm Jalen Blythe. Join us next time for more local stories that matter.